Hey guys, welcome to PV Garage. I'm Sean. In this episode today, we're going to have a look at lapping the valves to put back into this cylinder head. We're then going to look at reassembling that whole cylinder head and getting it ready to go onto the block. And then at the end of this episode, we're going to have a look at preparing our surface on the block, preparing the surface on this cylinder head, and also preparing our head gasket a little bit. And then we'll be bolting everything together, torquing our head bolts down, and having everything ready to go. Now you can see behind me, I've got my B5 half apart, I've got the subframe out. Bit of an issue with the subframe, we're going to talk about that another time. But for now, let's focus on this, so stick around. Okay, so I've got my fairly clean cylinder head here. I actually ended up taking it to my buddy's place. He's got a parts washer, so we threw it in there and uh, it did a quite a good job. I did a little bit of touch-ups myself. Actually, one thing I wanna just talk about real quick here before we start lapping our valves is just about the valves that I'm gonna use. So when I took apart my 2.7 heads, the heads actually came apart really nice and all the hardware was in much better shape. The buckets were in much better shape than what came out of this 2.8. So I'm going to reuse all of the valves and all of the buckets um, slash lifters out of the 2.7 heads in these. So I'm just using the casting from the 2.8 and the camshafts. Everything else is gonna be 2.7 stuff. Part of the reason for that, now we uh, got into last time we cut open a 2.8 valve and saw that it was actually sodium filled, which is cool. But uh, one of the viewers that was watching our last episode uh, mentioned to me that the grooves here for the keepers are a little bit different on the 2.7 valve compared to the 2.8. So this valve here is a 2.8 valve, this one's a 2.7 valve, and they're the same height. But if you have a look here at the tops where those grooves are for the keepers, you should be able to see that one of them's quite a bit taller than the other one. So uh, my 2.8 here, you can see this sort of fat part at the end is quite a bit shorter than my 2.7 valves. So the difference that makes is the 2.7 valve is going to keep that retainer in place a little bit lower on that shaft than the 2.8 valve. And what difference does that make? Well, it means that that exhaust valve spring is going to be just a little bit more compressed when the valve is seated against the seat there, which means it's gonna have a little bit more preload on it and it's going to be, in effect, a little bit stronger than the valve spring that would be on this valve, right? So by using the 2.7 valve um, in a performance application, especially for high RPM. What that means, that little bit extra strength on the exhaust valve from being compressed that little bit more means that it's gonna follow the cam a little bit better and you can rev a little bit higher before you start to get valve float. So um, very good observation by our viewer there to let me know about this 2.7 valve having a little bit more preload on the spring. So in my last video I said, you know, I would have just run the 2.8 valves, but with that new information that I have now, thanks to our viewer, I'm actually changed my mind on that one. And I think that the 2.7 valve uh, is the superior valve for a performance application, even though both the 2.7 and the 2.8 are sodium filled. So on that note, we've got my exhaust valve here. It's kind of scuzzy. I haven't cleaned it up yet. You can see, especially on the bottom here, there's quite a bit of texture on that valve. So when I go to try and use my lapping tool, it's not gonna to stick to that very well. So what I've done is I've taken my exhaust valves and actually cleaned them up uh, with a wire wheel in the bench grinder there. So uh, you can see it's nice and clean, nice smooth surface here for my tool to stick to. And before I go to put this in the head, I'm gonna do a couple things to this valve. I'm going to just take my valve grinding compound here and I'm just gonna put a little bit around the edge of this valve, right on that mating surface where it's gonna meet the valve seat that's in the head. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of oil just on this valve stem, just where it's gonna be sitting in the guide, just so that it slides in nice. So I'm just gonna drop my valve in now with my compound, and that goes in nice. And I'm gonna take my tool here. I'm just going to make sure that my tool is clean because sometimes what happens, you get a little bit of oil on your fingers from that oil I just put on the stem and then it ends up on my tool and then it won't stick. So we just suction cup that tool on and now, you know, fairly simple. I just give it a few little back and forth. I'm gonna pick it up, rotate it about a quarter of a turn, a few more, whoops, 
not having a good seal there. A few more back and forth. Now I'm not pushing on it, I'm just letting it turn sort of under its own weight. And you can hear the sound of the grit change. So as I turn it, it kind of gets quieter and I just, and you can feel it too. So I'm just gonna take that opportunity to pick the valve up and spin it a little bit and then make sure that that compound gets back into that, uh, in between that surface. Now, we're just gonna check that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've got my valve out here obviously. I'm going to remove the grinding compound that's still on it. Move my tool. Now I am gonna clean these heads out really well again once we're done this whole process. But for now I'm just removing a little bit. So, now we can have a look and we see so the main thing I would like to check, so if we have a look here at the seat, you can see it's a little bit, the color is a little bit dull. If you look at the seat next to it, um, it's a little bit shinier. So that dull color tells me that my grinding compound was in there and doing its job. And the important thing to look for is I check the whole periphery of that seat and make sure that there's no shiny spots. Now if I saw like three quarters of the uh, seat here was dull like this and then the last quarter was shiny that would tell me that okay My valve isn't sitting in there square or that seat isn't sitting in the head square And I'm not going to get a good seal anywhere where it's shiny still after doing that process Exhaust gases are going to be escaping through there and it's going to give me a big problem with sealing later So I can have a look here. I see that it's dull all the way around I know that that valve was making good contact all the way around and then I can have a look at my valve here as well. And you can see sort of a dull ring all the way around that valve. So we're having a look and it looks fairly even all the way around. I would say that that's a good um, little bit. I could probably do a little bit more because I, I haven't really, there's still some sort of stains on the edges here. So I could probably do a little bit more on that valve. But like I say, it, the process of doing this for me isn't about trying to like machine them together. It's just about checking to make sure that I've got good contact all the way around my valve and that I'm going to get a good seal later. Now if I did this and I found like a bunch of shiny spots um, on my seats here, like if there was a big shiny spot and I couldn't get it, get rid of it, or if there was a big shiny spot on my valve, you know, I might have to change valves. I might have to actually get these seats cut with a proper seat cutting tool to make sure that they're squared up to the guide there. But luckily for me, this one looks okay. I'm gonna do all the rest in both uh, heads here. I don't anticipate any problems, but you never know. So I'm gonna do that now. And then hopefully you guys will join me after. We're going to reassemble this whole head. See you in a minute. Okay, now that I've got all my valves lapped, I'm going to pull them all back out, give everything a good clean, just because you really wanna make sure you get all of the grit from your compound out of the head. You don't want that stuff floating around, uh, getting into your bearing surfaces and messing things up. And then we are ready to reassemble everything. Okay guys, I've got my head all clean, back on my stand, it's time to throw some valves back into it. And this is the fun part. So I've got, my new valve stem seals, and, ooh, exciting. I've got my SuperTech valve train parts. Now, there is something that I'm not, so, okay, this setup doesn't come with any um, instructions of any kind, and that's to be expected. I mean, these are parts for people that know how to assemble motors, so I don't know how I got them, but, we're gonna see if we can figure it out. So, obviously, uh, intake valve springs here, and we've got exhaust valve springs, and they're a double, so there's like a smaller guy inside of a bigger guy. Um, we've got all of our titanium retainers here, little guys for intake, big guys for exhaust. And then we have these spring seats, um, and I'm guessing these are for the exhaust springs for that that second uh, inner spring to keep it located once everything's together. Uh, I say, I guess, so like there's 12 of them. So if it was intake, there'd be 18. So it is for sure for that. 
Um, now, one thing I'm not sure about, and I'm going to check right now, I want to see if this spring seat fits over top of the valve stem seal, because if it doesn't, then I'm guessing I have to put this seat in first and then the valve stem seal over top. So we get this guy open. Here's that seat. Here's my valve stem seal now. Okay, so there's a pretty decent clearance around that. So I'm gonna go ahead then, and I'm just gonna throw all of my valve stem seals into the head first. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube on them and then uh, set them down in. Now I wasn't smart enough to order some assembly lube before I started doing this whole uh, process here. So I've got something here that I've kind of used as assembly lube since forever because when I was a kid I didn't know where to buy assembly lube and this is what they had sort of at Canadian Tire. So this is STP oil treatment stuff which is like you know you, you're supposed to throw this in your motor when you have an old beater in it. Um, helps it to not smoke and whatever but it's got a lot of zinc in it which is cool and um, it's super thick so like like you guys can see it's like molasses and this stuff is so sticky so I've always kind of used it as engine assembly lube just because like it's so tacky you can put it on the parts slam it all together and then it kind of stays on everything until you're ready to fire the motor up and then once it's running it just you know the oil just washes it away like it would with any assembly lube so I've got a bit of my sort of homemade assembly lube here on my valve stem seal and then just gonna grab and then I've just got a pair of pliers now I'm not gonna push it on with these pliers I'm just going to set it on the top of the guide now I, I, everybody's got different ways of doing this stuff like I see guys taking um, sockets that are just about the right size to fit over the valve stem seal and using those to install stuff I like to feel the seal go on by hand like and I'm sure you probably can with a socket too, but I like to just set it on there and then just push it down and you know, you can feel when it locks into place. So I'm gonna throw them all in. Now I've heard some guys will take their valve stem seals ahead of time and like soak them in engine oil for a while. And I don't know, like, is that is that a thing? Do you guys do that? Is that a common way to get your valve stem seal sort of ready for installation? What do you guys think? So before I go any further with this, I'm just going to get eyes on all of my valve stem seals there and make sure everything's sitting down the way it should. I've gone through and sort of pressed on them all, um, but I wanna just make sure I get eyes on everything and you can see that they like sit, the guide has a little shoulder on it, so they're sitting on that little shoulder of the guide. So I know that they're down where they should be and you know, luckily this head is fairly open. It's got a lot of like windows in the casting here so you can get a pretty good look at everything. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to um, drop these spring seats on the exhaust valves, I guess. Should probably throw some assembly lube on those as well and toss them in just so that they um, aren't dry metal on dry metal. I feel like building engines is kind of like a lot of other things in life where you just can't have too much lube so you kind of just lube everything and hope for the best okay now exciting times so I'm gonna start with my exhaust valves here just because they're a little bit more complex seeing as they have that double spring and they've got a really neat retainer so this is a titanium retainer but it's very cool because it's got that double step for that uh, second inside spring so let's have a look at one of those so you can see here I've got this little guy on the inside the big guy on the outside uh, I'm not sure probably not an up and a down they should be just straight and not tapered yeah so I'm going to go ahead and Throw my little spring in, throw my big spring in. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if these need to be clocked a certain way. I mean, probably not, right? Because they're going to rotate a little bit once the engine's running. 
Start with my little spring here. I know, I know, I lube everything, it's crazy. But, I don't know, it's just, you're not gonna break it by having too much lube on everything. Maybe that's why I use this STP stuff, because it's cheap, and I can use as much as I want. So I've got my little valve, I've got my, or my little spring, I should say, small diameter spring. I've got my larger diameter spring. I'm gonna throw my retainer on the top. Man, this is a nice piece, I love this stuff. Definitely worth the money. Ooh, so pretty. And now I am going to get my compressor, valve spring compressor that is. And I'm gonna grab my exhaust valve. I've got them all lined up so that it should be the same order. And I'm gonna, you guessed it, throw a little bit of lube on that guy. Just gonna lube the shaft. And then, pop that guy into the guide. Oh yeah, that feels good going through the valve stem seal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come in with my valve spring compressor, just like we did taking everything apart. Except now we're going in reverse. Now, this is gonna be the tricky part. I've gotta get my keepers. I thought this kit came with uh, keepers, but it makes sense that it doesn't because, you know, you could be buying this kit and putting different valves. I know there's like in-canal exhaust valves you can buy, and I think they've got just one groove um, for the keeper. I don't know, if, is that the performance thing? Probably. I don't know what the one, one groove for your keeper instead of three, I don't know what the difference that makes, but sure it makes a difference because it's a thing. Drop that into place. So I've got that one in. I'm just gonna use my pick to swing that guy around to the other side of the valve stem. And then get my second keeper in there. There we go. So that's on. And I'm going to release my spring here. And I'm just keeping an eye on it to make sure that the keepers are staying inside the retainer and not getting pushed out by it. Everything looks like it's seating in nicely there. And that should be all there is to it. Ooh, baby. That is a thing of beauty. Have a look. So now the only thing left to do before I put my cams in, I mean, obviously I have to do all the other valves, but I'm just gonna show you guys the one. So I've got a nice clean bucket here, or lifter, whatever you wanna call it. I'm just going to apply my assembly lube to the outside of that bucket, just so it makes sure to get some lubricant on the, on the walls of that bore in there. And then, just drop that guy in nice. Ooh, that fits well too. Beauty. So, you know, however many more times I have to do it here, and then I gotta build my other head, and I won't bore you guys with that part, but I'm gonna catch you guys in just a minute, and we're gonna throw some cams into these heads. It's so beautiful, sir. Now I do wanna just give you guys a quick reminder. Check your keepers after you do this work. Like, I struggled a little bit with this first one on the intake side that I was doing, having a hard time because it is pretty tight in there. And I took my compressor off and I was like, it looks funny and I pushed it back down and sure enough, one of the keepers was in upside down and had flipped upside down. So just make sure you check all those because like, I'm not sure what would happen if I tried to run that thing with the keeper in upside down, but I'm sure it wouldn't be good. So check them, make sure everything's good. Now it's time to throw some cams at this. Okay, so now it's time to put these cams back in, but I ended up actually swapping out one of the cams. So I've got the intake cam from the 2.8 and the exhaust cam from the 2.7. Now, the reason I swapped out the exhaust cam from the 2.8 was just because the 2.8 cam had a bit of scoring on um, the bearing surfaces here. So I just wanted to swap in the 2.71 because it's cleaner, it's in better shape. But before I go any further, I wanted to make sure that my timing is right between the two cams. What I'm gonna do now is I just wanna check and make sure that I have 16 rollers between those 
to uh, timing marks on the cams. So if you have a look at your cams, you've got a little groove here that's the timing mark and you've got one on the exhaust and you've got one here on the intake cam as well. Now, the exhaust cam mark, if you go straight out from it, it's just inside of this roller and the roller that's just sort of a little bit to the left of vertical from that mark is gonna be your number one roller. So I'm just going to put a paint mark on that guy and I'm gonna put a, just a little paint mark on my cam right by my um, groove there as well so that I have those lined up. And then I'm gonna count 16 rollers, so 16 pins here out from that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hey guys, who caught the mistake I just made? I'm glad I caught it while I was editing this video because it saves me having to do all this work once the motor's in the car. But basically the mistake I made has to do with this timing here. So you guys just saw me count 16 rollers, but I actually made a mistake because I put my paint mark on here lined up with the mark on my cam, but then I counted Instead of counting number one on this painted roller, I counted number one on the next one over. So I've actually got one too many rollers here. And if you have a close look, I've lined up my cam timing mark here with the arrow on my cam cap. But if we have a look over here at our intake cam, you can see that my timing mark on my cam is off by one roller. So it should be lined up with the arrow on my cam cap here and it's over by one. So what this paint mark should have been on this roller so now I have the fun job here of disassembling uh, most of the work that I've done here so I can rotate one of these cams in and get that back into alignment and make sure that my cam timing marks line up with the arrows on my cam caps. So sorry for that. Enjoy the rest of the video, but just keep that in mind, okay? Thanks. Now, that's my 16th right here, okay? And my timing mark on my cam is right there, so I'm actually off by one roller. I just threw these in here. But now's the time to do this before I have my tensioner in here because now it's real easy to just sort of rotate that cam a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull this intake cam out. I'm gonna slide everything over just one roller. And now I've got my uh, 16th roller lined up with my notch on my cam and my number one over here with my exhaust cam. So now I have those paint marks. Once I go to put the uh, tensioner back in and reassemble everything, it just makes it easier for me visually to make sure that everything's lined up and that my timing's gonna be correct. Now, as I go to reassemble everything, I'm gonna start by just putting a little bit of lube on the um, bearing surfaces here. And then I'm gonna bring my cams in, making sure I keep my timing marks lined up there. Now just before I put my tensioner in, I want to replace my half moon and I want to replace my metal gasket here. So first I'm going to just make sure everything's clean with some contact cleaner here. And then I'm going to put my new half moon just in there. And I've got a new gasket for my tensioner. And you'll notice that this gasket actually has some sealant right here. So just keep an eye on that. Um, if you're buying, you know, depending on the brand of gasket that you get, if you don't have that little bit of sealant there, the factory service manual recommends that you apply it. So I've got it on my thing here, so I know I'm good to go. And now I'm going to come in with my tensioner and I've got my little tool here keeping that compressed. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna pick up my exhaust cam and just try and sneak this guy in here. And I'm just making sure that my tensioner is landing on the dowels. So I had those two like spring-loaded dowels there, making sure those are lined up and going in properly. And then I'm going to check my timing on my cams again, just to make sure that that chain didn't jump. Everything looks good for that. And now I'm just gonna drop my bolts in here to my tensioner, make sure that that's located. And then I'm going to put all my cam caps on. Now, as I go to put my cam caps back on, I'm just going to put a bit of lube on this bearing surface 
same as I did on the lower bearing. That just makes sure there's a little film of lubricant before I start turning this motor over. Now before I install my double bearing cap, which is the one that's right next to the cam shaft sprocket that's driven by the timing belt, and my bearing cap here that's at the back on the exhaust cam, I just have to apply a little bit of sealant to the underside of these caps. So like right here where it meets the block, there's a little bit of sealant that needs to go on it. And same with that guy at the back. So I'm just gonna clean those surfaces up with contact cleaner, clean the caps, and apply that little bit of sealant and then put them on. So you can see here on this cap for the back, I've just got a very thin layer of sealant right up to that groove and not on the inside where the bearing surface is or close to that bearing surface. And then on my double cap here, you can see I've got sealant just up to those little grooves, not past them, very thin layer again. So next I'm just going to tighten everything up sort of like finger tight. And I'm going to start with the number two and number four caps on the intake and exhaust, doing like a crisscross. I'm just pulling it down until everything just seats on the head, like very light, not putting much pressure on it at all, but just making sure that it is pulling those cams down and seating them or seating the caps against the head. And then before I tighten the rest of them up, or pull them down to sort of hand tight. I'm just gonna back off my little tensioner compressor here and remove that tool. And then I'm going to pull down the adjuster here. Again, just making sure that it's square and that it's lining up with its dowels before I go ahead and snug anything down or pull that assembly down. And then I'm just gonna snug everything else up. Again, not torqued, but just sort of finger tight. And now I'm gonna to torque down all of my hardware here. The spec that I found showed me 10 Newton meters of torque on it, which is 88 inch pounds. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm gonna go cap two and four first, and then I'll do the tensioner, and then I'll do the rest of the caps in a crisscross. I couldn't really find a particular pattern that was recommended for tightening these, torquing these down. So I'm just going to go with that. The next thing I want to do is I want to put in my seals for the cams on the front of the motor here, and then my cam plug on the back of the motor as well. So when I was ordering parts, somehow I ended up with not enough seals. So I had luckily some extra ones kicking around. Now I've got some Victor Rhines ones here that have the little plastic guide to go onto the end of the cam. And then I have these L-ring ones that don't have the guide. Uh, and I'm going to use one of these first and then one of these on the same guide. And hopefully that'll just keep that lip sitting nice and square on the end of the cam when I put it on. Just make sure that you've got the proper seals. The proper one for the cams here is a 32 by 47 by 10. Now just to get my surface ready here, I'm gonna take a rag and I'm just gonna take some contact cleaner and just wipe the inside of that bore so it's nice and dry. And I'm gonna wipe the cam as well so it's nice and dry. Now I'm sure there's a tool for this, I just don't own it. And basically the issue is like, this side is gonna be fairly easy to get that seal in there because I can use a socket and just drive it in with the socket. Over here I'm not gonna be able to do that so I'm going to kind of just manhandle it into place, I think, and then tap it with a hammer around the edge. I don't have a socket that's big enough and deep enough to do both. So I'm just gonna ease this on here, get it right next to it. Now I just figured I'd put a layer of plastic between everything and just try and get this in as even 
as possible. So I'm nice and flush all the way around. Looks like it went on well. I don't think I'm gonna get any issues out of that. Now I'm gonna use my same little guide there to put this L-ring seal on, which looks different and that's fantastic because it's gonna drive berry nuts that one of them looks one way and one of them looks the other way. Now this one seems to have a Teflon. This L-ring part has a Teflon in her. This Victor Ryan's one was just rubber. I wonder if I should have had motor oil on that one. Oh well, it is, it's in there now. That L-ring seal is much nicer than the Victor Ryan's one. I kind of want to pull the Victor Ryan's out and install an L-ring instead. Now for this plug at the back, brand new plug, same kind of deal. I'm just gonna tap it in with my socket here. Now I feel like that should sit flush, but I don't know if that's right. It definitely doesn't seem like it wants to go in any further. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now back at the front of the motor here, um, I just wanna put my Hall Effect sensor back on. So you wanna make sure it's lined up with its little groove there. It'll go totally flush into there and actually the cam is sticking out a little bit. So if you put this on, cause if you're like 180 degrees out, it won't sit in totally flush. Um, so you wanna make sure that when you put that in there, that it sits right against the cam and that the end of the cam here sticks out a little bit past your uh, Hall Effect trigger there. And then I'm gonna tighten this guy up. Okay, so I've got my crankshaft locked in place. Not sure if that makes a difference, but just for timing, make sure I don't smash any pistons into any valves. I've got my mating surfaces all nice and clean. You can see on the cylinder head here too, I've come through and cleaned that really well with acetone, something that doesn't leave behind any residue. And then I've taken my nice L-ring gasket here and I've sprayed on some copper spray a gasket, which, you know, whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know, but I have some here, so I figured might as well use it. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to throw this cylinder head on. So I'm looking for my dowels and just drop it right on. I'm actually gonna move this guy around a little bit. So I have gravity on my side. So my cylinder head's on, got my gasket in between, still placed right. So I've got some ARP lube here that I'm just gonna put a little bit on all my head studs. And then I'm just gonna feed them all in by hand to start. Now this lube apparently helps you set the correct torque or gives it the correct resistance as you're tightening them, I'm not really sure. But Barry had extra and he hooked me up, so thank you very much Barry for that stuff. Now the torque spec for these is 40 newton meters and then 60 newton, newton meters, 90 degrees and then 90 degrees. And that ends up being 29 foot pounds and then 44 foot pounds, I think, and then 90 and 90. So I'm going to start out with my 29 foot pounds and I'm starting out by doing a crisscross pattern in the middle. So I'm gonna do these four in the middle. So from here to here, 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 and then uh, the outside four which I think I'm, is gonna be like from here to here to here to here. So we're doing like a small star and then a big star or a small cross and a big cross. And then same when I go to do my 90 degree and my 90 degree, I'll do the same pattern.
Now just before I do my two 90 degree turns on my bolts here, I'm gonna try and get down and just paint mark everything. So I'm putting a paint mark on each bolt. They are hard to see, but I'm putting my paint mark towards the back of the motor. So they're gonna end up with that paint mark all facing the front of the motor. They're all spun the right amount. All of my paint marks that started out facing the back are now facing forward. So I have my full 180 degrees after my first two steps of 40 newton meters and 60 newton meters, which is 29 foot pounds and then 44 foot pounds. And from here, I'm going to, uh, well, obviously put my other cylinder head on. We can start putting that excess power stage three kit, turbo kit on this motor. I'm gonna use, I've got the aftermarket excess power uh, manifolds. It was that complete kit with manifolds, turbos, um, some inlet piping and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, also the ECU, the injectors. The ECU, I'm gonna have to uh, change the tune on it a little bit because obviously I'm using 2.8 heads and that kit is intended for a motor that has 2.7 heads. So a little bit of a difference there, but you know, sign up for the, for the updates there. If you guys wanna see more about this motor as it comes together, I think I'm gonna leave you there at this point and um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching guys. <laughs> no SPS code. That's a good sign. Yeah. But I have no transmission. Well, minor details. Okay.